please join me in the call to worship. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. You discern my thoughts from far away. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O oh God. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. Let us pray. You are the rock of your salvation, O oh God, the source of our strength. You are the fountainhead from which flow living waters. When our souls thirst after righteousness, your justice sustains us. In need of encouragement, we behold your power and glory. We lift our hands in the sanctuary. With our lips, we praise you. We raise our voices in the company of believers and call on your name. Fill us now with your Holy Spirit and nourish us by your presence. Amen. This morning's scripture is taken from 1 Samuel, the third chapter, verses 1 to 10. The boy Samuel ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. One night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the house of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel. Samuel answered, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. So he went and lay down. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. My son, Eli said, I did not call. Go back and lie down. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. A third time the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down. 
And if he calls you, say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak, for your servant is listening. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We do thank our liturgist for reading our scripture today from 1 Samuel 3rd chapter, verses 1 through 10. These are the words that form the basis of our message today, and I want to share with you from the subject, speak, for your servant is listening. Speak, for your servant is listening. Let us pray. Our God, we do thank you again for what an honor and privilege it is to be gathered around your word. And so, God, we ask, Lord, that you would speak to us. Give us ears to hear what you would say, but let us not be hearers only. Let us be obedient to whatever you instruct us to do, that in our obedience, our lives would be made better. God, consecrate me now to thy servant, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in thine. God, draw me near, near, God, to thee, to the cross where thou hast died. God, draw me near, near, God, to thee, to thy precious bleeding side. And even again, God, give me the gift of preacher Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. As you could tell by the title, that this title had been taken directly from the text. In verse number 9, it says, So Eli told Samuel, Go and lie down, and if he calls you, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord came and, came and stood there calling as, as at the other times. And Samuel, Samuel, then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. First Samuel tells a story of a young boy's first time. He heard from God. Upon being weaned at the age of five, Samuel's mother dropped him off at the temple to fulfill her promise to give him over to the Lord for all the days of his life. This is during the time when Israel was virtually bankrupt, the days of the judges when everyone did what was right in their own sight. And even the high priest Eli's own sons, Hophni and Phinney, had a complete disregard for the Lord as demonstrated in their coveting and eating portions of the sacrifice meant for God. Samuel had a bedroom adjacent to that of Eli so that he might serve the nearly blind high priest during the night. One evening, God spoke in the temple, but not to Eli. 
his sons or the other priests, but Samuel, who was yet to know and have a relationship with God. After having mistaken the voice of Eli that called out his name three times, the fourth time when he heard his name, he replied to God as Eli had advised him, Your servant is listening. The Lord told Samuel that the priesthood would soon be removed from Eli's family. When morning came, Samuel told Eli about the Lord's coming judgment against he and his family. And since it could not be atoned for, Eli merely accepted it without any mention of sorrow or desire to confess and change. At the end of this part of the story, we are told that Samuel became so close to God that his word as a prophet became synonymous with the very word of God. The phase that half an ear let him hear appears 14 times in the Bible. And it is interesting because the number 14 is considered to be a symbol of salvation and deliverance. God still speaks and desires to speak to his people. God is willing to speak to us, but we must be ready to listen to him and to walk in absolute obedience to his word. God can speak to anyone he wants, any time he wants, through whatever means he wants, whether the person is expecting to hear his voice or not. There are two major challenges in hearing the voice of God, and each is associated with terrible consequences. The first is mistaking the voice of God for the voice of man as was the case of Samuel in our text. The second one is to mistake the voice of man for the voice of God, as was the case of the young, young man of God who was deceived by the prophets. There are three characteristics we can see in our text. God, Samuel, and Eli. God called Samuel but he was unable to recognize his voice. On the long run, Eli was able to guide Samuel, and he was able, able to communicate to God effectively. We shall discuss the topic under three subheadings. The pr principles about hearing the verse of God, one. Two, the prerequisites to hearing the voice of God, and three, the proofs of hearing the voice of God. Let us look first to the principles about hearing the word, the voice of God. The scripture does not feel, reveal several principles that can assist us in being prepared to hear the voice of God. It is possible to be regular in a church without knowing God, at least not knowing him personally and intimately. Verse number 10 tells us, Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not yet revealed to him. This is assisting in the priesthood duties without knowing God. The Ethiopian eunuch, which we find in our New Testament in the book of Acts, the 8th chapter, was very regular at worship, the worship center in Jerusalem but without knowing God personally until he met Philip. It is possible to hear the, it is possible to hear the verse of, voice of God without recognizing that it is God that is speaking. And many of us are, are familiar with those occasions in which God might have been speaking to us, but we didn't recognize his voice. We may not recognize God's voice the first time we hear due to inexperience, and as subsequent ties due to impatience or other factors. It may be necessary to have godly leaders as a mentor and a counselor that can help us to learn to recognize and respond to God's voice. Eli recognized what was happening and instructed Samuel on what to say if it happened again. We must come before God as humble and obedient servants if we want to hear what he's saying. First and foremost, our goal 
must be knowing God himself, not just experiencing the excitement of hearing his voice. Hearing God's voice flows out of a relationship and a connection to our life of fervent and effective prayer before God. Prayer is not only made up in an element of speaking to God, but it's also made up with an element of waiting and listening to see if God wants to speak to us. The altar of prayer is an effective platform of hearing from God. At our every prayer time, we should cultivate the habits of waiting patiently and quietly in his presence to hear his voice. Secondly, the prerequisites to hearing the voice of God. There are several basic prerequisites that are commonly found in people who hear God's voice on a regular basis. Some of these include the delight in God and the desire to hear his voice. If you want to hear God's voice, you must be convinced of the importance of seeking it. Those who listen to God's voice understand this is how God designed the Christian life to be lived. Our spiritual personal growth depends on hearing his voice and responding in absolute obedience to his leadings. Only when we hear God's voice and follow his leadings can we remain in the center of his will and the experience that all he has for us. The willingness and readiness to obey his voice without question. If you want to hear God's voice, you must be committed to obeying it. You can expect God to give you more information. You can't expect God to give you more information if you're not even acting on what he has already revealed in his word. You must be willing. You must be willing to live according to God's commands and learn his will. Living victoriously above sin and fresh and fleshly pleasures. Sin in our lives can be a powerful disconnecting effort that causes us not to hear God's voice. We must individually repent of our sin in our lives to clear the channels between us and God. We must also yield it, be yielded and yielding to the Holy Spirit without grieving him. The scripture tells us not to prevent the Holy Spirit, but give him free reign and right away. If you do not follow through on the Holy Spirit's leading, he he may see no reason to continue speaking. The Holy Spirit is our comforter, our helper, our teacher, our paraclete, one that comes alongside to help, our leader and our intercessor. The more we allow his ministry in our lives, the more, more and more and clearer we hear the voice of God. We must also wait patiently. Waiting patiently and quietly in the presence of God with the expectation, with the expectation to hear God's voice. A primary reason many Christians do not hear God's voice is that they do not wait or linger long enough before God to let him speak to them. You have to be willing to to put in the work. We are always in a hurry. We want to render popcorn prayers, and we want microwave answers. Listening is an important part of hearing. We need to develop a life that allows opportunities to slow down and listen to his voice. May we say like young Samuel, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Learning and growing and recognizing God's voice. It's like an exercise. The more you listen for God's voice and you respond to God's voice, the more you'll be able to recognize God's voice when he speaks. Sometimes when God speaks, we may not recognize it as God's because we are not accustomed to hearing his voice. 
If you want to hear God's voice, you must learn to recognize the specific ways he speaks to us. In John 10:27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. We must grow in our relationship with the shepherd, that we know his voice when we hear it. Developing an attitude of expectancy. If you want to hear God's voice, you must expect that he will speak to you. You need to work on the sensitivity of your hearing, having ears to hear. We must expect God to speak to us. If you do not hear anything, relax and enjoy the stillness. In the old Pentecostal church, they call it basting in the presence of God. In other words, just relaxing, laying back, enjoying the very presence of God that comes in prayer, just resting and relaxing in God. Be assured that God is present. During these times, we can learn to be content with his presence with or without any specific message or insight. Third, we must the proofs of hearing God's voice. How do we know that this is God? Whenever we perceive we've heard from God, we need to be sure beyond any reasonable doubt. There are several ways we can ensure we are hearing from God, and some of them include verifying verification by God's word. God never speaks contrary to his word. God will not speak to us or give us any revelation that is contrary to his word. Once it, once it contradicts the word of God, then we can cancel that out. We know that this cannot be God's voice. Secondly, we must have confirmation by fasting and praying. There are times when we are seeking an answer to God and when we need to hear from God such as when we are making a decision to go into ministry or making a decision to go into marriage or making a decision to accept a new job or some major decision, we must give ourselves to fasting and prayer. We must give ourselves to time of prayer and seeking. We must not move in haste, but we must sacrifice ourselves that we may hear from God when we get rid of fleshly ideals and desires when we seek God and repeated assurance through fasting and praying when we seek God's face we can be assured that God will answer us God wants to speak to us more than we want to hear seeking spiritual counsel is one way of proving that God is speaking. We should be open to our spiritual leaders about our convictions. Because God can use them to confirm to us. There are many times when I believe God was speaking to me, but I wasn't sure. I did all the other proofs. I continued to seek God. I continued to search God's word to be assured that it wasn't contrary to God's word. But also sought out the mature spiritual counseling of my spiritual leaders and mentors. In that case, it was my pastor. For an example, when I was ready to come to the United Methodist Church, and I believe that this is where the Lord was leading me. There was nothing in Scripture that said, Yea, I say unto you, go to the United Methodist Church. But I knew that I had been praying. I had been praying and fasting and seeking God's face and giving God every opportunity to turn me around. I would tell God, I said, God, you have every opportunity to stop me. You see where my mind is. You see where my, I'm heading. You see the direction that I'm going into. But if this is not your direction, God, you have every opportunity to stop me at any moment. And what I meant by that in my relationship with God and seeking God, whenever something is contrary to God's will, I get an uncomfortable feeling way down in my soul. I get like a check or a hold or a stop or some some uncomfortableness. And my spirit is, is then disturbed. 
and I know that God is trying to get through to me. Hold up a minute. Don't don't move so fast. But on on, on this occasion, I also went to my mentor. Their responsibility is not to hear on our behalf or to impose their conviction on us, but to guide us through the mind of the Spirit. Then you need to give some time. Don't be in a hurry. Another way, in, in a tool that can be used, when you are not ready, really sure, you can wait patiently for further confirmations of God from God. So many times, so many things will be naturally faded away if we just wait. You know, they often even tell you in the world, don't be forced into quick decisions, especially in the middle of a crisis or buying a car. Don't be pressured by the salesperson or the re- realtor. Don't, don't be pressured. Wait. Give it some time. I call it sleep on it. Sometimes you need to sleep on it. And in your time of, of giving it some time, things will pan out or prove out or reveal itself. And then God will continue to give further confirmation. Now also another way in which to prove uh, that this is God speaking is confirmation from others. There have been many occasions my fellow Christians, without knowing what I've been praying for, God has used them to be a confirmation. There's a genuine confirmation from two or three witnesses with good reports that we can be assured of the voice of God. The scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians 13 and 1, as Paul writes to the Corinthians church, this is the third time I'm coming to you. And in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. Paul was writing to the church of Corinth and telling them that they can receive witness from others. Another way in which we can prove that God is speaking is evidence of previous guidance. You know, we learn from our history. We must look back at our history and see what we've learned. We can check that there are other things that we've heard from God in a similar way that eventually proven to be God. If not, we may need to seek confirmation through one of many different ways. Harmony with establishing the will of God. When a new revelation contradicts the already revealed will of God for us, we need to take caution and to seek confirmation. Some of the established will of God may include our marriage, our ministry, our locations, and our spiritual direction. For instance, the young prophet received a direction from the old prophet that contradicts the already revealed will of God. He would have turned it down. 1 Kings 13. 15 through 22. In our conclusion today of this message, speak, Lord. Speak for your servant hears. God delights to speak to us. But we must be willing to listen to him and walk in absolute obedience to his word. What good is it to God to keep talking to us when we're not paying him no attention? What good is it for God to continue to talk to us when and give us instructions that we're not willing to be obedient to that which he's saying. It is impossible to recognize and hear the voice of God and enjoy the blessings of being guided by the Holy Spirit if you're just going to ignore him. The scripture tells quench not the Holy Spirit. However, we must be willing to do our part to ensure we hear him clearly. And avoid being led in air by the deception of the devil and the fleshly lust. We must develop a close relationship with God through prayer, through fasting, through reading scripture. When you are familiar with the scripture, you, you are familiar with the voice and mind of God. When you read your scripture, you, you can automatically know if it falls within the 
guidelines of scripture because you're so familiar with scripture you will know if it speaks within the confines of the word or out of the confines and guidelines of the word we must develop a close relationship that when God speaks to us and we must be patient in our time of prayer we must wait we must wait God desires to speak to us and the more we speak to God and the more we open ourselves up for God to speak to us the more we respond and obey what God instructs us to do the easier it is to recognize God when he speaks is no different than me many of you have talked to me on the phone and even before I tell you who I am you already know who I am because you recognize my voice and so it is with God the more you speak to God and the more God speaks to you the more easy it is for you to recognize God when he is speaking speak Lord for thy servant here is listening our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come they will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen <laughs>